this episode is really designed for you. Um, and I am excited to address it because we are focusing today on really how to balance your side hustle or your side business um, and your full-time job. Now, when we talk about the reasons to have a side hustle, if you need that, I'm gonna link to that video because we've already done that. That is actually episode one um, in this series. And I'm gonna link to the, actually the whole series right here. That way you guys can actually access it and start from the beginning. Especially if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, you've got that gut feeling that keeps telling you that you are destined for bigger and better things. You wanna control your destiny. You want financial freedom. You wanna build more wealth for yourself, your family, in your community and you are just looking for the support system that you need in order to be able to push forward. C -P -C -P -P. Hey there, my loves. Welcome back to my channel and CPTV, the place for current and aspiring entrepreneurs who want to start and grow their businesses and passions in order to experience the true financial decision-making and lifestyle freedom of entrepreneurship. I am Cheryl or CP, whichever you prefer. And today we are talking about the Side Hustle to Freedom series. This is actually video number two in the series. And it's really focusing on my peeps who have come to me over the years and said, I am in that segment of entrepreneurs that you love to work with and coach so much that are in between their side hustle, starting their business, don't know what to do. This episode is really designed for you. Um, and I am excited to address it because we are focusing today on really how to balance your side hustle or your side business um, and your full-time job. Now, when we talk about the reasons to have a side hustle, if you need that, I'm gonna link to that video because we've already done that. That is actually episode one um, in this series. And I'm gonna link to the, actually the whole series right here. That way you guys can actually access it and start from the beginning. Especially if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, you've got that gut feeling that keeps telling you that you are destined for bigger and better things. You wanna control your destiny. You want financial freedom. You wanna build more wealth for yourself, your family, in your community and you are just looking for the support system that you need in order to be able to push forward. So let's really dive in. Um, there are five things that I focused on um, as I was building my empire and while I was working for someone else. And these things made the whole experience for me um, less overwhelming and more manageable. Um, so I'm excited to get into it with you. So let's get to work really what I had to do in order to balance the two, because it is absolutely 100% possible. Um, so it's also, also going to help you kind of eradicate that fear. So number one thing that I actually had to do in order to balance the two was really get my mind set together. That is over half the battle, right? Getting your mind wrapped around this whole idea that you are destined for bigger and better things. And the first thing I had to do with that mindset was actually pay attention to that nagging feeling. I mean, for so many years before that, my nagging feeling, I will be sitting with someone in my cubicle with a boss who I felt didn't know as much as I did, didn't have as much value as I did. I might have been training them. They were making more money than me. I was absolutely disappointed. Maybe the organization I was working for was all messed up, their systems, their processes. They didn't know what they were doing. And I would go to work every day and sit and think to myself, you know, I've got more to bring to the table. This is not me walking in my purpose. And so that very fundamental feeling, that gut feeling that I used to have and I used to get was like nagging at me every day. I did a lot of ignoring that feeling. Um, and I guess in my mindset, I had determined, well, it's always good to have that side hustle, um, like I talked about in video one, but the side hustle isn't ever really going to replace my main hustle because I was raised in an environment um, and with parents, and we all have those boomer parents who teach you, you're supposed to go somewhere, work for 35 years and collect your pension. Um, and that's really was, was, was drilled into my head. And so the whole idea of entrepreneurship or owning my own destiny was never even taught to me. It was something that I had to kind of teach myself. And that's what I mean when I say I had to start paying attention to that nagging feeling. And I had to really start believing that nagging feeling. Um, I also had to really begin to prioritize my goals. Um, even though I was a mother and I 
still am. I have six children. For those of you who uh, don't already know that, um, go ahead. I'm, I'll do a long dramatic pause so that you can be like, get the fuck out of here. No, I cannot. It's serious because it's very important. Peace. Yes. Six children. Um, I'm also a wife. Um, so I think I have seven children. <laughs> um, I'm a daughter. I'm an employee. I was a sister. I was an auntie. I mean, all of those responsibilities that we all have. And so it wasn't like I had all this extra time. And so as I was balancing my side business with this full-time job, I had to really get to a point where I was prioritizing that dream because for some reason that dream, that idea, because my mindset believed that it was always supposed to be a side hustle and never really grow into anything. I kept pushing it down. Down, even when it came to outside forces of my full-time employment, like my family or my friends or my kids or whatever, it got pushed all the way down to the bottom of the list. And so prioritizing it above everything else was also a part of getting that mindset together. I had to really get to the point where I was focused on believing in the pursuit of that dream and believing that I had a special value to bring to the world. Also in that mindset range, I had to really get myself organized. Um, and I'm, I'm a generally an organized person. Those of you out there who already know me, have worked with me, love me, are my friends and family, you know that I am really a very organized person, even in the way that my brain works. It's very sequential, it's step by step and organized. But Leading up to this point, I wasn't as organized in my professional life because when you're working for somebody else, you kind of go there, you do your work. When you leave there, um, you're doing your, you're living your life. And so I had to really make the commitment to begin to infuse into my life calendar management. Um, that was back in the day when there were still paper planners and paper calendars and not necessarily electronic ones. Now my electronic calendar rules my entire life and it kind of guides my day, but Back then, you know, I didn't have the kind of job where calendar management was a big deal because I wasn't running a lot of appointments or meetings or things like that. And so I had to teach myself calendar management. Um, I also had to begin to use a list of things to do um, that I still use to this day. Um, those of you out there who have seen me with my list, um, I will definitely get you your new 2020 version. Everybody asks me for it. Um, but that was really when I began to train myself to keep everything and write everything down to to keep myself organized. And so that mindset of organization was critical as well. And the last piece of mindset shifting and changing is a biggie. And I really, really want you to hear me right now. I had to commit to myself as much as I had been committed to my boss. And that meant my personality was work ethic driven and it still is. I go above and beyond. I will work my butt off for someone and something that I believe in. And I had convinced myself that it was more important and more critical for me to do all of that for somebody else's dream because I was involved in full-time employment. Um, I had to actually begin to tell myself that I needed to work as hard on my business, my dream, as I was working for someone else's. And even though I was continuing to be in that full-time employment situation because of my risk aversion and for my safety, um, I realized that I needed to work just as hard for myself. So as many hours as I was giving to my full-time gig, I needed to make sure that I was giving at least 50% of the same hours to myself. And that was a huge huge mind shift, mindset shift. And that's something that I want you guys to think about. When you talk about pushing off your business or not starting it or how to balance it and it really paralyzes you from moving forward, can you be as committed to yourself as you've been to somebody else all these years? And if you're answering that question with yes, then I double dog dare you to show me. I triple dog dare you. So my second tip in balancing your full-time job with your side business or side hustle is learn the art of time management. Um, it's not easy to do time management. And um, I had to learn that when I was making that transition as well. I had given myself kind of a two-year deadline and I knew that during that two years, there was so much I had to learn. And really managing my time well, taking ownership of my time was a very important piece of that. 
So that's when I mentioned already that my calendaring began. I began to live my life with a calendar. Um, I let that calendar guide my actions and I controlled the calendar, which in turn meant that I was more in control of my time. Um, as far as time management was concerned, I also began being very stingy with my time. And I'm going to recommend that to you as well. Being very stingy, meaning, no, I've got this goal. This is something that I dream of. This is going to help me in my purpose. And with that being said, I've got to make myself and my time a priority. So I'm going to have to say no. Um, and that also meant sacrificing. So stingy, I guess, and sacrificing can kind of be interchangeable. Um, I had to limit my girls' night outs. I had to limit my date nights. I had to limit my chill nights and really focus on being stingy with my time and using that time that I began being stingy with towards my business, my learning goals, my knowledge base, and to kind of improve things so that I could slowly achieve that two-year deadline that I set. I also had to begin to work in time blocks and anybody who has worked with me that I've coached or mentored, or even as an employee of mine or a colleague of mine, they know that I am adamant and I actually teach classes on time management and prioritization and focus now. Um, but working in time blocks is critical. That means that I block certain times of the week off for certain things. Um, so you have to do that as well. Like for instance, I can tell you right now in my calendar, Monday, are blocked off all day long for staff meetings and content creation. Um, and then I also have, you know, a block of time every single morning for email, a block of time every single evening for email. Then I've got times in my schedule that's already blocked off for my coaching calls um, and for my strategy sessions. So my schedule is already pretty much mapped out um, each week. And when I started blocking my time while I had the full-time employment, it was that much more um, significant because I already knew that I was going to be at work from like eight to four. Um, but I knew that every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, let's say from five until seven, I had to block off to work on my business. And so working in those time blocks was also critical for me to be able to balance and transition things. And that Begin to pay attention to every task that you're doing and what you can actually hone and skill set development that you can take with you into your business. And you have to use every situation as an opportunity to create a roadmap for your success. So as I was in my full-time gig and I knew I was growing my businesses, I would really sit there and say, oh, you know what? This can be useful when I have my own business. And I had like a start my business notebook and I would just make a note, do this, do that, do this. So I was actually leveraging my my skills in my current position, giving it my all as if it was my own business in my full-time gig and taking the opportunity to learn and develop that skill to use in my business long-term. The fourth tip that I'm going to give you is create a game plan and stick to it. I've already alluded to it, but when I knew that 
that nagging feeling was never going to go away. And in that mindset that I talked about, I started focusing on it. I knew I had to give myself a deadline. Um, and that deadline was based off of a number of different things, but I knew that I was going to continue in that role and really give a full-time business thing the opportunity. My deadline for myself was two years. And so that was my game plan. And in that two year time frame, I had to create kind of a growth strategy. Now I've already done a different video on how to create a growth strategy for your business. But I think a lot of those lessons in that video, which I'm going to link to right here, can also apply for you in this position because your growth strategy might be how do you grow and start your business while you're working for somebody else. And it will ultimately help you begin to develop that game plan and be able to give that timeline. So get the game plan and stick to it as much as possible. Everything that I did, I knew I've only had two years to do it. So I had to be very disciplined and begin to use those skills that I knew I was going to need in order to be a successful entrepreneur. And my fifth tip and a very important one is I actually had to become a financial management guru. And you are going to have to use this time to develop that skill as well. Um, I really had to know my numbers, which means um, I had to have a personal budget. I had to know exactly how much money I was spending every month on my bills and on my stuff. So I would create a personal budget. I knew what my monthly expenditures were. So I knew how much money I had to be bringing in every single month in my business before I could leave my full-time gig. And then the stuff that was coming out of my paycheck, like my benefits and stuff like that, I did some research to figure out, well, what is this going to cost me if I have to get my own benefit plan, if I have to get my own insurance, especially if you don't have like a spouse's insurance you can go on. And so I allocated that and I knew that I needed a certain amount of money. I think it was like at the time, maybe $4,000 a month or $4,500 a month. I knew I needed to be making $4,500 a month in my new business plus whatever it was costing me in order to be able to leave my full-time gig. And I knew once I hit that number, I was going to be able to do that. So I had to know my numbers and I also had to begin to allocate money and save up because I also knew that starting a business, it wasn't going to always be consistent. It was going to be up and down and I was going to have to make some investments in my business. And so I was able to kind of sacrifice a few things each month and begin to take an extra money. I think I was allocating 200 bucks a pay and I had set up my business account already um, because I had an idea. But even if you don't have a business account, and I do have a link to a video that I can share with you on how to set up your financial structure if you're at that point. But if you're still really not, not set up officially as a business, then you can just have a savings account that you know is allocated towards your business. And I had money automatically direct depositing per pay in there. So I was saving up some money. And then I also, from the financial perspective, began to track all my expenses and my revenue so that I had a clear picture of what my business's potential earnings were and what my potential expenses were because I needed to know that it was going to cost me 400 bucks a month to run my business, right? Or 500 bucks a month to run my business because then I would take that 4,500 from my personal that I needed plus the 500 from my business that I needed and know that I needed to generate $5,000 a month in order to be able to focus on my business and be stress-free. And so those were the numbers. And during that time frame, I I really had to become a financial guru, but it also began, all of these things helped to begin to alleviate that fear um, that was paralyzing me from making that leap. And so knowledge is power. Game plans are power, people. So all day long, all of these things were so critical in me being able to make that leap. And I recommend that you pursue them 100% all day long. So for the next few Fridays, I'm going to continue to bring you these golden nuggets in my Side Hustle to Freedom series um, and share with you a lot more about my story because I'm telling you, I've come a long way. Um, I've finally reached that point in my entrepreneurial life where I've learned so much through the mistakes and the failures and, and I'm really enjoying giving you those golden nuggets. So make sure that you subscribe. If you like this, please give me some like, give me some love, um, share this with a friend, watch it over and over, go back, whatever you gotta do, just absorb all these golden nuggets. And I am looking forward to helping to create the class of 2020 entrepreneurs entrepreneurs. And until next time, my love, mwah! bye.